Hey, what's up guys? My name is Josh and today we're going to be talking about the ELAC UB5 bookshelf speakers. Uh, this pair of speakers is renowned for being a great reference. A lot of audiophiles love this speaker and there are some pretty legitimate reasons as to why. Uh, there's a number of reasons why it's a good reference as well and a number of reasons why I consider it to be the HD650 of speakers. Now the HD650 has been a great reference headphone for about 20 years now. And the UB5 shares a lot of the same reasons as to why the 650 is a great reference. And yes, sound quality is one of them, but one of the other aspects that makes it such a great reference is that everybody and their mother has heard it. And so it makes it a great reference because it's a great point of reference. So if I say, for example, the bass response on another speaker is a lot like the UB5, a lot of people are gonna know what I mean and that point of reference is extremely important and should not be undervalued. All right, now real quick before we jump further into this review, I wanna take this time to uh, thank another YouTube reviewer, Ron from New Record Day, because he actually sent these speakers to me uh, so that I could listen to them and hear them for myself. He's not a representative of ELAC. ELAC's not paying me. This is 100% unbiased, just my opinion of the speaker. Now that, that intro is out of the way, I actually wanna talk about the UB5s. So the UB5s are coming in at $500 a pair. Uh, they measure about 12 inches tall and about eight inches wide. This is a four ohm speaker and has a sensitivity of about 85 decibels. So you're gonna need a little bit of power to power it. Um, I'd say somewhere in the ballpark of like two to 3,000 watts should do the trick. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you, you need a little bit of power, not anywhere near that much, but you do need a bit of power to push these. So the quality of the actual construction is fairly good in terms of like the density of everything. It's rear ported. It's got three drivers, kind of a coaxial tweeter and mid-range driver, and then the kind of the base reflex driver. And up close and personal, the driver quality is really good. Now the one and only complaint I have about the build is that it is vinyl wrapped. And I don't know about other UB5 units, but mine is actually starting to peel a little bit on the edges. At $500, I really would have preferred these to be painted, but overall build is fairly good. Okay, so sound quality. Um, what is kind of the main bullet points of the sound quality? Just excellent placement of instruments and vocals um, in terms of like where they present themselves and how they present themselves. It's very clean and things are really pinpoint accurate. And that's one of the best features of this speaker. Compared to other speakers below $1,000 that I've heard, this is one of the best examples of imaging and placement. Uh, I'm not gonna say the best, but it's one of the best that I've heard. The other things good about the speaker are the mid-range and how it presents itself in terms of the vocal performance. Also the texture and speed of things like acoustic instruments tend to do really well on the speaker. And I'll have more thoughts on those areas in just a second. Now, when you're listening to the speaker as an overall speaker, it's very, very forward. And I think this is going to be one of the really great things about this speaker, but it's also gonna be one of the things that I think certain people are gonna be like, eh, it's not really my thing. Um, like I have a friend who's come over and listened to all the speakers that I have, and he doesn't like the UB5's forwardness. I do, I like it for the forwardness, but it's gonna be kind of controversial just depending on who you are and what you prefer. Uh, one of the first things that intrigued me when I very first heard this was just how kind of confident and exacting the sound was. It is placed precisely where the speaker wants it to be placed. It is hitting exactly how the speaker wants it to be hit. And it is doing exactly what the speaker seems like it wants the sound to be doing. So it's got this sense of control over the music. But that sense of control almost has this ability to feel like the speaker kind of has no chill. Like it just doesn't ever seem to relax. It's always kind of upfront, super in your face, and always, always, always kind of giving you that forward feeling. Now, I will even admit, while I really enjoy this, it doesn't always make everything enjoyable to listen to. So I have a good example. I have a classic reference album, which is uh, Yoshihiro Kawa's new album, Spaces. It is phenomenally mastered. It's one of the best mastered tracks of all time. If you don't believe me, just go and listen to it by yourself. Yoshihiro Kawa, Spaces. But here's the thing about it. A lot of the tracks have this kind of similar progression where they kind of start off kind of slow and they have these different sounds that are happening. And you'll see, to the best of my knowledge, uses a lot of real world recordings. And as it progresses through the music, a lot of his songs get progressively more kind of complicated. The, the music gets more complex. There's a lot more things happening. And it's a great test for speakers because there's a lot of stuff going on. The positioning is excellent. The recording quality is great. The dynamics are great. 
And everything about it really is a really good speaker test. You just kind of have to pick and choose what you're going to be paying attention to. And with the speaker, the beginnings of the songs were very enjoyable because you had these kind of point source sounds that were happening, you know, here and there. But just because of how forward everything ends up being, it almost sounds just too complicated by like when the song's really starting to ramp up. There's just kind of too much information coming at you. And while some people are gonna love that extreme forwardness and everything's hitting you all at once, I, I personally like a little bit more room to breathe with those really complicated tracks. But one of the impressive parts about it was that it was able to keep up with what the track was demanding of it. And it didn't ever really fall apart in my testing, which was impressive to see though not always enjoyable. So this is one of those things where my personal preference doesn't necessarily align with what is technically impressive. So treble performance definitely follows the forward nature of the speaker. And it's some of the best I've heard for $500. It's definitely uh, not sharp as in a painful way, but sharp as in, you know, it's refined. It is tight. In fact, this entire speaker has a very refined feel to it, where it seems like it knows exactly what it's capable of doing at all times and it can display it like a pro. So everything from the sweet but crackly nature of violins is gonna come across with a lot of forwardness, great placement, but also is going to have that very, you know, warm wooden sound for things that sound warm and wooden. But then if you go to like an electronic crispy, you know, note or a hi-hat or something like that, it's gonna have that metallic ring just clearly. And you're, even if they're happening positionally in the same area, you're gonna be able to distinguish the two types of instruments and the two types of sounds just really clearly. So mid-range follows suit pretty much 100%. The characteristics of all the different flavors and nuances and different kind of uh, color palettes of the sound, those, those are all very well separated. Now when it comes to vocals specifically, that's one of the more, that's one of the great things about this speaker. In a big room, one, you can spread these apart really far. I, mean, I think it's at one point today when I was doing my final listen, I had these 12 feet apart and they were still able to maintain a really solid image in the very center of the room. And you could just kind of see the soundstage wrap around the singer, but they were forward enough to present themselves as kind of a singular unit away from the rest of the music. And the rest of the music still detailed, but it's definitely kind of in the background. And vocals specifically are one of the tracks that reestablish the confident nature of the speaker. It's quite in your face. It's, you know, it's very forward. It's not like the Kef Q 150s, for example, which are the vocals are kind of stepped back into the soundstage and it feels more like an event. Um, this doesn't have that feeling. It kind of has that free floating in space feeling, but separated from everything else. So everything kind of has like a globe that it operates in. And depending on how the track is mixed, you can either have a really small globe for this little tiny click or this little tiny instrument over there, or you can have this big globe for these big broad sounds, or you can have kind of like a point source, like, you know, something about the size of a mouth. If the recording is, you know, done well, the speaker can present something that size with a lot of confidence and it can present that illusion very, uh, well, very well. So mid-range, I love. Okay, so bass response. Uh, again, you're gonna see that clean, fast nature that both the mid-range and the treble have. However, the bass response is not very full at all. And this is one of the, the big downsides to the speaker. Um, it's got enough to kind of give you a punchy feeling or, you know, a, kind of a, a little bit of a kick. But in terms of like going below, I'd say even as high as like, 60 hertz, maybe high 50s. Um, after that, it really starts to lose me quite quickly. And it's just not very convincing down in that area. And this is despite being a big cabinet, like the Q150s, which I just reviewed recently, uh, had more bass than this by a lot. And that's a smaller cabinet and um, smaller total driver area. So comparing those two, the Q150 kicks this thing's butt in terms of uh, bass depth. Now, it's not necessarily going to kick it in terms of the upper bass uh, cleanliness. The UB5 definitely takes it there. And it's very clean bass, but it's just not very full. And that's kind of the biggest drawback of the speaker is if you're like me and you want a either full range experience or you want the bass to at least seem full from what you know it can sound like, 
a subwoofer for this speaker is going to be required. Um, even with EQ, I could never really get this thing to a satisfying level of bass response just in a 2.0 system. Although it is worth noting that depending on what you like, a lot of the features here as a 2.0 system could be right up your alley and maybe you just don't care about bass response as much as you value the other things that the speaker is good at. So this will lead us into imaging and soundstage. Imaging, I think, have gone on enough. It's very good. I think for the price, it's like a 10 on 10. Super stellar performance. Soundstage, um, the soundstage is a little bit tricky. It's kind of hard to figure out here. Uh, I've had these speakers for like three months and I still don't really feel like I have the like a perfect sense of what this speaker is capable of in terms of soundstage. And it's not because it's so mind blowing, but it's because it's really dependent on how these are placed and where they're placed. Um, so soundstage depth is, for $500, it's okay. It is okay. I, I'm not gonna say that it's great. I don't think it's great. I think the Q150, just for another example, just recently, uh, I think that that speaker has better soundstage. But there's a whole bunch of things happening in the soundstage that would make this better for certain songs, um, whether that's going to be kind of the positioning or the singular nature of this speaker or whatever it happens to be. So it's really gonna trade blows there. But in terms of like how far back you could reach out and grab something, I think the Q150 beats this particular speaker. Now, one thing that I tried and I tried and I tried to get but never could was the illusion of it going kind of beyond the boundary of the far right speaker and the far left speaker. So this never seemed like it was going past that level. Even on, again, that Yoshihiro Kawa album that is mastered just to a T, uh, where it has lots of songs that will have uh, kind of sweeping sounds or like Chocolate Trip Trip by Tool, uh, the Fear Inoculum album. Even on some other cheaper speakers, is going to be able to go far beyond the boundary of that speaker and kind of lie to you in that sense. But this never does. So it's all kind of happening within the two speakers. And it didn't matter if I was listening to the room width wise or length wise or small room, big room, always kind of had the same performance there. And before everybody comments, I tried towing in, I tried towing out, I tried a lot of different things. I just couldn't get it to happen with my gear. Not really sure why. Now there is kind of one unorthodox workaround, which I did not do most of the testing in here. It was just when I was trying to figure out how, what the soundstage was capable of. Um, and that's literally to just put them as far apart as they can go. And that way you still get this sense of largeness and scale, but it's all happening between the speakers. It's just instead of happening kind of narrowly, it's happening very wide. And the imaging is so great that even like 15 feet apart, these things can still present a solid center image uh, that performs fairly well. So I guess this is gonna lead me to the conclusion. So similar to the HC650 headphones, um, this speaker is going to give you a great understanding of kind of treble response, mid-range response, and you know, to a reasonable degree, the bass response. And it's gonna be able to display those uh, within what it's capable of. It's going to display it very confidently. And it's not really gonna try and falsify you by pretending that it can do something that it can't do. And my personal feelings of this is that this speaker legitimately is a fantastic reference point for $500. You're gonna be able to see benefits of speakers that are a little bit higher in price and other competitors to it. They may be a little bit better in certain areas, maybe this or that, but as an overall package, this speaker is fantastic. Now, if you're holding off because people say that it takes a lot of power to power, I did try out a lower power amplifier on this, like a 50 watt Micah amplifier, which is like hundred bucks, super cheap, just see if it would work. And it doesn't really have that like coming alive feeling, but it still sounds pretty good. And if you're holding out on this because you don't think you have enough power, you probably do, um, but it is gonna scale and perform better and better with more power as you go along and get better gear. All right, that's gonna wrap it up. If you have any experience with the speakers or have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you like the video. Like the video if you like the video also. <laughs> if you really like the video, I hit the little bell notification to get notified when I drop new videos, which is just about every weekday now. And until the next video, my name's Josh, signing off.